What's up everyone? So today we're talking about training around injuries. Now, if you've been training hard for any amount of time, you're probably going to get injured, at least eventually. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can actually be a good thing if you use it to get better. So in this video, we're going to talk about one, how this happened, two, how to avoid it, and three, what to do while you're injured so you can keep progressing and actually get better while you're injured. So the first thing to realize is that most injuries are not acute, they are chronic. So what that means is that they happen over a long period of time. It's not like you just wake up one day and boom, you're injured. No, usually over a period of a few days, a few workouts, a few weeks, or even a few months, the injury will become worse and worse until you go from being not injured to injured. It doesn't happen immediately, it's a long-term process. So I think it's useful to break this down into stages where you can clearly define where you are on this not injured to injured scale. So the first stage is going to be where it is not really noticeable. So after you do a training session, you do incur some amount of damage, not just to your muscles, but to your ligaments, to your tendons, and even to your bones. There is a, a stimulus on that side of things as well. Now this isn't an injury, but it's worth noting that this is how injuries happen. They start very small, very slight, maybe a slight little micro tear in a ligament or a tendon that doesn't affect your performance. You don't really notice it, but it's there. You can't see it. It doesn't even show up on like some kind of scan or anything, but it is absolutely there. So this is stage one. You don't even notice it, but it's there. Stage two might be some kind of stiffness in the morning. Now. No jokes, I know this is a, uh, a funny way of putting it, but getting some extra stiffness or rigidity or turgidity in the morning is uh, going to be a big warning sign. So if you wake up and you know your lower back has a little bit stuff, maybe, uh, stiff, maybe getting out of bed you feel a little bit of tightness, uh, this isn't an injury yet, but it's a sign that there's some localized inflammation and you are on the way to getting injured. It also might take a little bit longer to warm up. So let's say you've been squatting a lot, uh, your knee is a little bit stiff when you're walking around in the morning, and when you're starting to warm up, maybe it takes an extra couple sets to really get going. Or maybe you struggle to hit depth, or your technique feels a little bit off. Uh, this is gonna be stage two. It's also worth noting that you can still have a very good performance and even hit personal bests during stage two. Once you warm up, you might feel really, really good. However, if you don't take the time to recover and you keep going down this path, it can be very easy to get to stage three. And stage three is where you get extreme stiffness in the morning and you, <laughs> and you cannot uh, really warm up. So it really affects your performance. Maybe your knee now hurts a lot and uh, you try to warm up and it just hurts even more and you can't really have a good performance. Maybe you can do other things um, and you can still sort of function day to day uh, but there is definitely some, you know, effect on your performance. And then stage four is where you are fully injured. So there's probably quite a bit of pain even doing daily activities. Maybe you wake up and like you can't even walk properly. Maybe you have to be on crutches, that kind of thing. So this is going to be stage four. So again, to recap, stage one, not noticeable. Stage two, a little bit of stiffness in the morning. Uh, stage three, uh, a lot of stiffness and now it affects your workout and then stage four, you're injured. I also apologize for laughing, I'm clearly not very mature. Okay, so now that you're injured, you should look back and try to assess, number one, what caused it. Now, it's amazing how many people never even do this. They, <laughs> I ask them like, okay, well, your lower back hurts, what do you think caused it? And they'll just be like, well, I don't know, uh, you know, I was training and then now my lower back hurts. Well, no. I mean, something caused it. It's not like, you know, your lower back hurts for no reason. There is something that did it. If your knee hurts, it's probably squatting or maybe some kind of push press movement that puts a lot of stress on the knee. If your lower back hurts, probably deadlift with poor technique. Uh, it could be push pressing again. Overhead pressing is going to do it as well if you arch back too much any kind of Olympic lifting, even bench pressing with a big arch can cause lower back pain. For shoulders, typically it's going to be the bench press. Dips can also do it as well. Pressing 
uh, also can cause shoulder pain. Any kind of left to right imbalance or rotator cuff weakness or upper back weakness, those are all going to cause shoulder pain at some point. You also need to make sure that your back is at least as strong as your pushing muscles. For elbows, typically going really heavy on curls, doing like really heavy tricep work can also cause it. Uh, too much close grip work, uh, low bar back squatting, which can also cause wrist and shoulder pain. That is going to be uh, a big cause as well. So this is why it's important to add movements slowly. So if you add like push press, bench press, low bar back squat, cheated lateral raises, behind the neck, uh, Klokov press, you don't really know what's going to cause your shoulder pain. If you get shoulder pain after adding all of those movements, you have no idea. It could have been any one of those. It could have been the combination. And so in this type of experiment, you don't know what actually caused the result. So this is why I think whenever possible, it is important to add movements slowly and at least one or maybe two to three movements at a time. Don't just add a bunch of movements that are completely new that stress the same area because then you don't really know what happened. All right, step two, once you've identified the problem, stop doing that. This might seem really, really obvious, but I've met people who I said, you know, what is causing your back pain? And they said, uh, deadlifting. And then I said, stop deadlifting. And then they said, Jeff, you're a genius. You're an amazing coach. Why didn't I think of that? Just stop doing the movement that is causing pain. It's just that simple. Stop doing it. You might be able to do the same movement, but you'll have to either change the loading or the volume or the technique. So let's say you are doing a round back style deadlift and you are getting pain in your lower back. Well, you might need to lighten the load and do a more strict flat back style just because it's not suitable for you to pull in a rounded position. Just because I do something doesn't mean that you can do it as well. For a lot of tendon or ligament issues, the loading is also going to be important. So you might get knee pain when going over 120 kilos in the squat, but if you use 100 kilos, you can do a lot of volume and you have zero issues. So, you know, know which kind of loading can cause pain and which kind of loading you can get away with. You can also do something else. If you've been bench pressing a lot and now your shoulders hurt, well, just take a week or two of doing different variations. So you can move your grip in and do a close grip, which is gonna put more stress on the triceps and less on the shoulders. You could use dumbbells, which is gonna allow you more freedom of movement, which can take stress off the shoulders as well. You can change the angle. You can do incline or decline for a few weeks or a few months. If, if need be, a few months might be what it takes to solve your issues. But in most cases, I'd say a few weeks, probably one to three weeks will be enough for the injury to go away. And I think it's important to constantly be assessing. So for me, uh, I deadlift with a round back. So you can see my, my middle back and my upper back is quite rounded. And honestly, I've always pulled this way. It just feels more comfortable. Um, I don't get any pain at all. And this is just how I pull. I've pulled probably about 5 million kilos in this kind of style. However, if someone else pulled this way, they might get injured just because their anatomy is going to be different than mine. So don't just copy someone else. You need to find which technique is going to work for you uh, in terms of lifting the most weight, but also in terms of just staying healthy. Not everyone can do the same types of movements in the same types of way. You're also going to want to stay active. So find some kind of movement that can help get blood in the affected area. So if you're getting lower back pain, do these. Do some kind of back extension using just your body weight for high reps. This is going to activate the glutes, the hamstrings, as well as get blood in the lower back. Plus, there's no compression of the spine. So when you're deadlifting or squatting, you're going to get compressive uh, forces on the spine. But if you're doing back extensions, this actually helps to open up the sacrum. You can also do reverse hypers as well if you happen to have access to one. But just a normal back extension, either 45 degrees like shown here or 90 degrees, can also be good just to get blood in the muscle, in the, in the bones, in the tendons, in the ligaments, everywhere in that whole area. Just flush the area with as much blood as possible. And this is going to help a ton with recovery. Keep in mind that movement can hurt, but it can also heal. And if you don't move at all, 
the healing process is going to take a lot longer. Even something like walking can help to flush blood into the knees, the lower back, the shoulders, and it's important to stay active. Stay as active as you can without further injuring or damaging the area. In fact, I would say if a doctor tells you to rest completely, they are a bad doctor. In fact, most doctors nowadays who actually have studied the literature will get patients up and moving as quickly as possible. So post-surgery or post-injury uh, or anything, they will tell people, get up, walk, move, do what you can. As long as there is minimal pain or no pain, move. Just move, try to get blood into the area. Uh, it's almost like a massage. If you have, let's say, a quad injury, just move, move the quad. That will, again, get blood into the area and massage the area, which will help it heal. Even something like push-ups. So let's say you have a shoulder injury, doing high rep push-ups can help get blood into the area. High rep rear delt raises, uh, chest supported rows, anything, again, that is high reps, fairly easy. You know, you're not doing a 10 rep max. You're doing like 30, 40, 50 reps, just trying to squeeze the muscle and get everything flushed in the area. So to give you an example, let's say you've been doing like a small off squat program where you're squatting uh, high frequency, high volume, high intensity, and you start getting knee pain. It goes from stage one and you start getting stiffness in the morning. <laughs> uh, then you go to extreme stiffness. You're now at stage three. Uh, and then finally you get an injury. You keep pushing and now you are injured. What should you do? Well, you should do as much as you can. So if you can walk, walk. If you can do bodyweight squats, do bodyweight squats. If you can do squats with just the barbell without getting pain, that's going to be good as well. Do as much as you can while you stay below the threshold of injury. Also modify your technique to make sure that you don't stress the area too much. So in terms of a squat, this might mean sitting back a little bit and putting more tension onto the hips rather than letting your knees come forward and staying more upright. So you might need to modify your technique slightly in order to promote recovery. And gradually this injury should go back from stage four to stage three to stage two and finally to stage one. However, keep in mind that if an injury happened once, it can absolutely happen again. And if you do the same thing, uh, odds are that the injury will come back. So let this be a lesson. If you do the same thing again, you will get the same result in most cases. Yes, maybe the tissues will heal and you won't have any issues, but typically speaking, if it was a weak point before, it will be a weak point in the future. And this is where prehab comes in. Let's say you have a rotator cuff injury. Uh, if you don't strengthen those areas that can really prevent future injury, you will probably get injured again. So this is where doing something like face pulls, rear delt raises, chest supported rows are really gonna strengthen the correct muscles, allow you ha to have better technique and prevent injury in the future. But keep in mind that it could always come back, okay? So it's important to be vigilant with stage one and two. And if you get to stage three, that's where you really have to have the discipline to stop training and stop doing the same movements that are causing it because you will progress from stage three to stage four if you keep pushing. So the best advice I can give, I would say, is be to monitor your progress, to know yourself. So if you wake up in the morning and your wrist hurts, well, maybe heavy wrist curls or heavy reverse grip curls are not the best choice. Maybe you can switch to dumbbell curls or preacher curls or something uh, like neutral grip pull-ups that are gonna cause less stress on the area. And this is where having a lot of movements at your disposal is gonna have a lot of benefit. Being able to switch out movements and knowing which movements stress which areas is gonna be incredibly useful. And honestly, this is a big part of the reason why I wrote my book, just to give people a lot of different options when it comes to working out. If you have 10 different types of push exercises, that is gonna be much more effective at preventing and rehabilitating injury than just having one or two. If you're just doing one exercise in a movement pattern, there's a good chance that at least over time, you're gonna get injured. You're gonna stress a certain area too much and you're gonna get messed up. Don't do that, buy my book. 
Finally, be patient. Injuries take time to heal, to recover, and you really need to have discipline and know when you can start to do the movement again or when you can start to train heavy again. All right, that is all for today. I hope you liked the video. Make sure to like the video. It does help a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Stay safe wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Peace.